So I reckon this is quite interesting. Um, I haven't posted anything on YouTube for a while, so I'm just doing a quick update of uh, what I'm up to. I've been working on this thing here, which is an Arduino. Essentially, it's just a function generator. I've essentially kind of deconstructed the code that uh, I found from a couple of people on Instructables and YouTube. Uh, to kind of understand what they were doing to uh, generate a, a clean sine wave um, and I'll link to those in the description because I don't really want to kind of rip off anybody's code without giving them uh, attribution um, clearly what you're hearing right now is not a clean sine wave it is a peculiar thing that just made me want to make a little video about it essentially what you can hear in the middle of a nice sine wave is this debugging output that I've had to include in the program just so I can see what a few of the numbers are doing inside the Arduino that's the technical description for what's going on it reminds me um, of visiting the uh, National Computer Museum uh, at Bletchley Park um, I was talking to one of the guys there and they said that uh, computer technicians used to listen to the actual sound that the computer processor made um, because it was quite easy to tell if the computer was doing something wrong or out of the normal routine if the tone changed. I mean obviously I understand this is quite a different thing. What we're really hearing is just the serial communication on those two pins there which happens to be the two least significant bits of the uh, sound signal. This is an R slash 2R uh, digital to analog converter. This is very ubiquitous uh, online. It's a very easy way of taking a byte value from one port for instance of an Arduino and turning it into an analog signal extremely quickly. Um, that is to say because it's parallel of course it's it's instant you set the port and you get a particular voltage value but put handy labels on here least significant bits most significant bits uh, anyway um, what I'm doing with this debugging output is measuring the value of this pot here this pot is connected between 0 volts and 12 volts um, because I'm hoping to integrate this synthesizer if I ever actually finish it with the Eurorack system which has uh, minus 12 volt, 0 volt and, and plus 12 volt rails. Um, obviously I'm not connecting 12 volts directly to the uh, analog pin. Um, I'm actually using a 1 meg resistor um, at the, um, I don't know what you would call it, the wiper of the potentiometer there um, and then a 100k resistor down to ground um, but this should allow me to measure pretty much any voltage up to 12 volts including 5 volts with reasonable resolution um, just that one meg gives some extra protection if I put this on a jack on the front of a synthesizer panel. Um, this should be able to protect the Arduino um, against kind of accidental over voltages etc. Obviously this sound is terrible because it's pausing to output serial. Um, but if I change the... I'm just going to close that down. I'm going to change my debug to false and re-upload. Um, and this means that the program is doing exactly the same thing uh, except outputting nothing to serial so it's still measuring the potentiometer with very high frequency um, it's just that value is can be used internally it's not actually putting any information out to the console incidentally I think the noise of the Arduino uh, programming is quite fascinating. I want to believe that that you could actually connect the TX and RX to a speaker 
while the Arduino was uploading, but you know, these things seem to be pretty resilient. As you can hear, this signal is very clear, uh, but it's actually doing the job of measuring this analog voltage in while it's outputting the frequency. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to do a bit of kind of number crunching as well in the same cycles. Um, I've got my voltmeter connected across the uh, ground and wiper pin of the this linear pot here. Um, just stuck my voltmeter pins into these things because I don't have crocodile clips on my voltmeter. And that means I can just monitor the input voltage as I change the, uh, the value of the potentiometer there. Essentially what I'm going to do with this information and the information that you saw on the screen uh, when I had debugging mode activated um, is calibrate the voltage in uh, and hopefully create a uh, volts per octave input for this uh, synthesizer. That's basically a one volt per octave um, scale there. I may need to make this into a lookup table or something in my program, I'm not sure. Um, that's essentially one volt divided into twelfths. I've been doing a lot of reading about how to um, calculate the frequency for a given note within an octave. Um, so essentially 440 is your middle A on your uh, piano keyboard. Uh, that's the A above the middle C. That's always 440 hertz in a kind of standard tuning. So essentially the formula is 2 to the power of the octave number plus the note divided by 12. Um, note is a bit misleading. Um, essentially that is where A would be 0, A sharp is a 1, B is a 2, etc, etc, because A is your reference tone there. Essentially using this formula I'll be able to calibrate a lookup table for different notes and frequencies and that will help me quantize the, um, the notes. So what I'm doing now is I'm adjusting this potentiometer there, this voltage divider on the analog in pin until the voltage at the wiper measures a precise value um, I'm entering it into a spreadsheet um, with the byte value that it corresponds to, which is just there, 25. So it looks like it's turning out fairly linear up to a volt. We have 0, 25 and 51 in the bytes. Uh, it'll be nice if it turns out that it continues in this fashion. I plotted this graph in Excel of volts along the bottom and the byte value along this axis and up to 5 volts it seems really linear. There's a little bit more data towards the end of the chart because uh, for 1 to 2 volts I found 1 12th steps within the volts. Um, so there's a kind of wobble at the end of the chart but I think it makes most sense for the Arduino to kind of ignore those little anomalies and to, at least when it's quantizing, uh, pick the closest available step and I think that's going to be pretty accurate. You can add a trend line to the data of a graph and then say display equation on chart and there is the formula that I would need to put into the Arduino uh, to map bytes to volts. So that, day, that equation was actually to map bytes from volts. Uh, so I just swapped my axes around and this is the formula for volts from bytes uh, using the voltage divider that I've set up. So I decided to speed this up and use a lookup table instead of the floating point math. Um, I had to use progmem read float near instead of read byte near. Um, I'm still sort of getting used to these progmem functions. 
Um, so this is just the, that's my lookup tables that I created and that's the byte input from the ADC and up here and here's my lookup table that I created using a PHP script um, where I plugged in these values here so these values are now just they don't really need to be in the Arduino program um, I just create that lookup table and paste it in here so I created a lookup table based on middle C being zero volts um, I probably should work out a way for it to go below zero volts though uh, possibly so middle C is 262.3 Hertz that corresponds to a byte value of zero um, I've been just been checking for middle A so it's around 0.75 and the frequency should be 440 Hertz that's going to result in a frequency of 438 so I might need to th rethink the resolution of volts per octave but this is going to be good enough to uh, just kind of give it a go this evening so there's the frequency being approximated there so this would be I'm making that an F sharp at about half a volt above middle C now let's turn off the debugging and see what happens well that seems to be a success I had a bit of trouble because I forgot that the to become a pointer for progmem a number needs to be converted you can't use a float basically as a pointer you have to convert it to an int first um, so that uh, was a stumbling block for a few minutes uh, I was getting 758 something Hertz constantly and that's because I was trying to use a float as the pointer in the sine wave away if that makes any sense to you at all I mean, I'm not saying that people watching this video are stupid I'm saying that I don't explain things well uh, anyway I'm going to shut up so that you can show see that this is actually playing a C4 note 262.3 Hertz if I increase it to if I increase this to half a volt it should become 440 now obviously this is not quantized at the moment but that's my next step Well, it reckons F sharp. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Five half a volt is F sharp. Um, I'm going to increase it to 0.75 volts, which should equal an A. Perfect. Now, the value within the Arduino is not exact, but according to the guitar tuner, that's bang on. So I'm happy with that. Probably within, unless you have perfect pitch or something, you'd probably be happy with that. I am well pleased. I've uploaded a new lookup table with quantized frequencies down to middle C I realize actually the octaves go too high with the table I have to be kind of outside the range of a normal piano even so I think I might need to look at what the standard for volt per octave range actually is because it's obviously too great now so this is now that's middle C there I'll turn this up a little bit That's D, D sharp. I'm on the finished oscillator. I'm going to include a control to turn quantization on or off. You can see there, you can hear there, it's actually stuttering between 
two notes a little bit. So that's obviously a problem. It's interesting on the boundary between the octaves, it also stutters badly. Just sanity checking my code there, and I've noticed what this awful noise that you can hear there is. It's because the voltage is obviously not entirely stable between these two points, which is why, and unfortunately in my lookup table, the C's below 1 volt are actually noted as being octave 0, not 1. I just found that I made a similar mistake around G sharp. Um, the boundaries are not perfect, that is there is some jitter possible on a lot of the notes, but this particular one is extremely noticeable. Anyway, that's, this is not much to look at at the moment, but I think this could be an interesting, this could be extremely interesting to work on. I got into this because I've, I've been playing around with VCV rack on my computer. This is a really fascinating program which kind of got me interested in the Euro rack format of synthesizers. Um, essentially what I'm doing now, if you are interested in Euro rack, I'm trying to produce something which will do the same job as a VCO and an LFO. I don't know if I'm going to be able to put that in the same module with a switch between them or something like that. Or maybe even have them work just by selecting the frequency range as with one dial there. Um, and what I really find interesting is these uh, sequences that you have in VCV rack. Uh, that's kind of my next thing to design once I have a quantized um, oscillator essentially. In fact with the uh, analog in sampling frequency I have here I may be able to use the Arduino itself as a quantizer. I mean essentially my plan is to use one Arduino per module um, within a setup like this. I hope you found that interesting, it really is only the germ of an idea, but I feel that there's a lot of depth in this to explore. I find the idea of creating Eurorack modules based on something like this very interesting. Maybe give me a thumbs up if you uh, want to see if I actually progress with this project at all. Um, if you want to see more videos about electronics, photography, open source stuff, I built a CNC router, a watering system, which seems to have got a totally disproportionate amount of views. I've done all sorts of stuff. So if you like miscellany, um, I just stole a friend's catchphrase there. Uh, please do give me a subscribe, if that's how one says it.